A few years ago, I walked in Darwin's footsteps on the Galapagos Islands. It was so surreal. The animals were so close that I thought they had to be mechanical Disney creations. I saw a vast array of finches, each species with a unique beak shape perfectly suited for its food source. Long, skinny ones for drinking nectar, and short, strong ones for cracking seeds. And those finches promoted growth of their food by cross-pollinating and dispersing seeds in their poop. The only finches that thrived were the ones that could nourish themselves best. Any finches with beaks too fat to fit in flowers or too weak to crack seeds died off. Survival of the fittest. A similar game of survival of the fittest is going on inside of your body. You plus the 100 trillion microbes that live on and inside of your body make up your microbiome. And everyone has a microbiome. We have symbiotic relationships with these microbes that are fundamental to health. Everything from gut health and body weight to immune function and mental health. But the highly processed diets of today are starving our microbiome. So we need to figure out what to eat to nourish our microbes. This is where prebiotics come in. Prebiotics are nutrients in our food that are fertilizer for beneficial microbes. But what nutrients are prebiotics? Where do we get them in our diet and how do they work? Let's science it. Hey, welcome to Nourishable, I'm Dr. Lara. The healthiest gut microbiomes are diverse like the Galapagos, with thousands of kinds of microbes. But modern day processed diets are starving our gut microbes, turning that diversity into a monoculture. This microbe monoculture starves the intestine of energy, making the linkages between the intestinal cells more leaky. A leaky gut allows nasty chemicals to seep in and cause inflammation throughout the body, over time driving diseases like type 2 diabetes and cardiovascular disease. Therefore, we want to learn how to manipulate the microbiome to optimize health. One way is through probiotics, where you eat actual live microbes. Another way is through prebiotics. Prebiotics are compounds in our food that fertilize beneficial microbes. Manipulating the microbiome through food isn't new. In the 1920s, scientists Recker and Chaplin showed that feeding rats specific types of carbohydrates changed the microbes in their gut. Well, their poop, but that's how we study the gut microbiome. Fast forward to now, and scientists are researching how carbs from plant fibers can fertilize a healthy microbiome. Fiber is composed of little building blocks strung together by chemical bonds. Humans don't have the enzymes to break apart these bonds, so we can't digest fiber, but our microbes can. When the undigested fiber gets down to the colon, our microbes ferment this fiber. Then they poop out chemicals. Just like those finches pooped out seeds to spread their food source, this micro poop is good for our health. Some microbes poop out lactic acid, which makes the intestine more acidic. This stimulates growth of good bacteria and inhibits the bad inflammatory bacteria. Other kinds of micro poop are used as energy by the intestinal cells, act as signals to bolster the intestinal barrier, and reduce inflammation. Feeding fiber to our microbes generates beneficial microbe poop, which is good for our health. And this is an especially important message today because American diets are super low in fiber. Refined grains like white bread are stripped of fiber, leaving only starches that are easily digested by the human. This leaves no nutrients for the microbes in our gut. Just like the malnourished finch with a beak too weak to crack seeds, the good bacteria are starved and die off. Not all fiber qualifies as a prebiotic. Some types of fiber can be digested by both the good and bad bugs. In order to be considered a prebiotic, a nutrient needs to be selectively used by the good bacteria only to stimulate their growth and activity. Plus, it needs to induce some kind of health benefit for the human. So let's talk specifics. What are prebiotics and where can I get them in my diet? The best studied prebiotics are in the fructooligosaccharide and galactooligosaccharide families of fiber. Let's call them FOS and GOS. We can eat FOS in asparagus, garlic, onions, beets, bananas, tomatoes, wheat, barley, and rye, and GOS in legumes like chickpeas and lentils. FOS and GOS stimulate growth of the good bacteria in the lactobacillus and bifidobacterium families. When these bacteria ferment FOS and GOS, they produce beneficial microbe poop. How about those health benefits? One common issue among adults is constipation. We've all been there. Can a prebiotic help prevent constipation? Enter inulin, a type of FOS extracted from chicory root. Supplementing healthy but constipated adults for four weeks with inulin improved poop consistency and increased frequency. 
significantly enhancing quality of life. Fertilizing our microbiome with the prebiotic inulin maintains healthy pooping. Another source of prebiotic fibers is oatmeal. Oat fibers like beta-glucan stimulate growth of the good bifidobacteria and generates that beneficial microbe poop. Fiber isn't the only kind of prebiotic. Right now, researchers are looking at other non-digested nutrients that can be fermented by our gut microbes, like the colorful polyphenols in berries and curcumin from the spice turmeric. Who should eat prebiotics? Pretty much everyone should be eating fiber-rich fruits, vegetables, whole grains, and legumes, which naturally contain prebiotics. One exception are people with inflammatory bowel syndrome, or IBS. Some IBS symptoms can be managed by identifying specific dietary triggers through an elimination protocol called the Low FODMAP Diet. This diet eliminates all nutrients that can be fermented by microbes, and then slowly adds them back in one at a time to identify specific problematic foods. If this applies to you, seek out a registered dietitian because it can be a really tricky process to figure out on your own. And the goal is to identify the least restrictive diet possible. What we eat drives survival of the fittest in our microbiome. Your food choices determine whether you nourish or starve your microbes. Diverse microbiomes are the healthiest, and this diversity is supported by eating a variety of prebiotics. So far, most of the prebiotic research has been done using supplements. And while we can buy prebiotic supplements and pills, the best long-term evidence we have shows that eating high-fiber whole foods, like fruits, vegetables, whole grains, and legumes, supports the healthiest microbiomes. Build your diet around diverse plant foods to nourish your microbes. That's what science tastes like. Thanks for tuning in to Nourishable. Check out my video description to see all my references, and be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all things nutrition.